no way. All right. Hello and welcome everyone. Thank you for joining us. This is our first STEM Sisters video. And today, um, so I'm Ami Bakare, um, but today we will actually be getting to know uh, my sister who is the other part of the STEM, the STEM Sisters group and uh, Dr. Bandu Bayan. She is um, in medical molecular genetics. That's what her PhD is in. And so today we're going to be asking her a few questions um, just to um, go along with the genetics or the Black in Genetics Week this week. And so um, without further ado, Bandu, do you want to introduce yourself? Thanks, Ami. Um, yes, welcome everybody to our first um, STEM Sisters video. Um, this week is Black and Genetics Week um, over on Twitter. And it's been amazing to see all of the individuals um, in my field. And so I'm excited to um, also share a little bit about myself. So. Yay. Okay. So we'll jump right into the questions. Um, so the first one is, how did you choose your major and what was college like in your major? So like um, classes, internships, and prep for your career. Good question. So um, my undergraduate um, degree is from Indiana University. I obtained my bachelor's um, in biology, actually. And um, like a lot of biology majors, I was pre-med. So I think um, I chose my major because the requirements to um, apply for medical school are very closely aligned with the coursework that you have to take for a, a biology degree. Um, so I had some experience with research from a high school research experience that I was very lucky to participate in um, called Project SEED. So I was a Project Seed Scholar in high school, and that allowed me to do research at the Indiana um, Cancer Research Institute um, during my, um, I think I was a junior about to be a senior. So I knew what it was like um, to do research. And um, I'd also had you know, some exposure um, participating in a, a program at uh, Indiana University. I think it's now called the Hudson and Holland um, like summer programs, I was exposed to these um, laboratories as well. So I knew that I could do biology. I had some, you know, some experiences in the lab and um, they kind of fit the criteria for being um, pre-med. Um, I don't know, what was the second half of that question? Um, just what was college like um, in that major? Um, it was hard. <laughs> so um, even though I had exposure to these classes in high school, you know, I was able to take pretty high level life science courses. We had a biogenetics class. We had advanced human physiology. You know, we had all of those types of courses in my high school. So I had been exposed to rigorous classes before, but you get to college and you know it's another it's another situation especially once you get past like sophomore year and you start getting into the you know advanced level this um or that um of course there's the um daunting organic chemistry that was pretty much the bane of my existence um loved physics loved um, you know, biology, loved genetics, loved all these other courses. I took endocrinology, like I took all of these great classes, but organic chemistry was, I thought was going to defeat me. Like I thought was going to make me drop out of school and I was going to be like homeless. So wow. okay, uh, it was bad, um, you know, but I was able to like make it through. But that was the class that pretty much, not, you know, knocked me off of my like, I'm great at all academic things. That was the class that was like, sis, <laughs> you're not. 
Um, Everybody needs that class. That's That was the class for me. We were just, I was, whatever that meme is where Diddy's looking at that, he's looking at the guy and they're just staring at each other. That was me looking at organic chemistry. Actually, organic chemistry too. Like you may get through the first one and then you're like, Yes, I've made it. And then organic organic chemistry too is like, sis, you have to also, I'm the final boss. Wow. Yeah. So it was rough. Uh, it was rough, but um, enjoyable. I got to have more research experiences, obviously, um, with lab. And I, I was a McNair scholar. Um, and so I got research um, experiences with that. Also got to travel and, and, um, share my research um, with, with others. So I had some really great experiences, but that's after I avoided a certain death with organic chemistry. Got it. Okay. Good to know. Um, so the next question is, why did you decide to go to graduate school? And then how did you choose which school and which program to go with? Yeah, so um, pretty much right after undergrad, um, I left for medical school. So I um, went to a university in the Caribbean. Um, I applied to uh, Indiana University, which uh, when you're from Indiana, that's like where you wanna go to med school, I think. Um, and didn't get in and heard from one of my cousins actually about this school in the Caribbean where, um, you know, you could go there and, um, you know, folks do just as well and um, pretty much got in and went um, immediately after um, graduating. And so um, did my first two years of, you know, basic sciences there and then um, came back to the States to start studying for um, the step and did that for a little while. And then that got costly. And so I moved back home um, and home is Indianapolis. So moved back to Indianapolis. Um, and in this period of time, um, decided, you know, what's not great being broke all the time. And so um got a job and I actually got a job at a pharmaceutical company in um, our city and was doing, you know, basic bench science. And what also overlapped with that period of time was um, our mother um, getting pretty sick. Um, she'd been ill, um, but, you know, it couldn't really put a finger on what was going on. And since I was home and, you know, I was like this, medical student, um, you know, as she was going to, you know, appointments and things like that, um, I would, I would go with her, like I would go with her and I would go with my dad. And um, once my parents would tell the people I was in medical school, uh, they would just, they would start sharing, you know, information with me and they would let me, you know, see what they were doing. They would show me, um, you know, and stuff like that because you know they were like okay you're you know you understand what's going on here and i started asking a lot of questions and i would kind of take some of these questions back to folks that i worked with um you know at this pharmaceutical company and i would just have questions that didn't have what i thought were proper answers and I remember talking to one of my mentors now and asking questions one day and him saying, the type of questions that you ask are like a researcher, not a clinician. And I remember thinking, um, what? <laughs> and, you know, he's like, you know, just these are the type of questions we ask here. And we ask them here because we are seeking um, solutions to problems. We are trying to, you know, figure out how to make it easier for clinicians to diagnose. And we're also trying to understand these diseases and how they work. And so as time went on, a little bit more and more frustrating to me that 
questions I would ask, um, you know, maybe in the doctor's office weren't getting answered or they couldn't answer them. Um, and so over time, I thought about, you know, going the research route. I had this experience again from high school and also had it in undergrad. And not going to lie, like the studying for the steps and taking them, I was like, you know, what? I'm not loving this. I know it changes, but I'm this is it amazing for me. Um, and so I thought, you know what, I'll apply um, for graduate school. And if I get in, I'll go. If I don't get in, I'll like stay in medical school. And I remember like telling my parents that. <laughs> And, you know, they were just like, go for it. I mean, I guess like <laughs> whatever means that you're not like quitting school, do that. Um, you that know, like, right. that's what they did. So I, I remember I brought it up and then I didn't bring it up again until I got my uh, admissions letter. Um, I applied to Indiana University School of Medicine because I needed to be um, near. I, I needed to be close. Um, so that's how I chose IU. I did, I literally didn't apply to any other school. So I was like, if IU doesn't accept me, then it's <laughs> back to, you know, back to med school I go. But like, um, that was really, it was my first choice. Honestly, it's a great school, you know, it's a great place, but it was for location that I, that I really chose it. And I think be, having that experience with, at the pharmaceutical company exposed me to, um, beginning to see how people ask questions. And I spoke with people about, you know, what should I go into? And a lot of people um, steered me towards genetics because it was framed, uh, it, it fit a lot of the framework of the questions I would ask. Oh, okay. And, um, you know, one thing I was very curious about was why certain medications are, you know, certain people are told to take this um, medication that is supposed to work. And then on certain people, it doesn't work at all. Um, and there are no other options for them. And it really, really intrigued me to start looking into, you know, how the, the drug discovery process and how clinical trials work and how like patient recruitment even happens and things like that. Um, and so genetics was where I went and I knew I wanted to be in a field that could be could apply to many diseases and genetics is one of those so that's my long story <laughs> well i think it's important that you um had a mentor that explained to you like okay well these types of questions that you're asking are more in line with um like a different profession than you were seeking because a lot of times when you are young you don't know what you don't know. So, I mean, if somebody doesn't tell you that that's an option for you, you might not know otherwise. And so that's really nice that that person told you that. Yeah, for sure. I would have had no idea um, because again, like as a student in a lab or being like in high school, I mean, I did experiments and then I you make your little poster and stuff. But I mean, you're not thinking like the person who's, like whole existence is to try to answer this question. Um, and so seeing it from that perspective, I realized like that's the type of curiosity I have. And hats off to clinicians. Like I have a great respect for physicians and other clinicians, like some of my best friends are doctors, right? I, I really, really respect what they do. I do just feel that some of us have a propensity for curiosity in a different way. That's not always related to diagnosis that, you know, we want to understand tools. We want to understand like treatment and why it works, why it's not working and, um, and things like that. So if someone wouldn't have told me that I probably would have just kept on the path I was on. Okay. So the next question is, what is your dream role and um, what role do you think you'll retire doing? That's a major question because yeah, that's it's like a while from now, but. <laughs> my dream role? Well, my dream role is, you know, running 
you know, my own, you know, biotechnology company <laughs> with my sister oh, and, okay. you know, being able to impact lives globally, um, you know, through our innovations and being able to, um, you know, take folks like us with us. Um, and, you know, still putting together all the pieces to what exactly that is going to look like. But, um, you know, being able to use my talent and my skills that I've developed in my field um, more, more broadly and in a way that impacts a, a lot of people. Um, and the role I would like to retire from, hmm. I guess that would be president and CEO of that company. <laughs> um, and I think there is a lot that I would love to gain from um, working, you know, with other groups, with with companies and things like that. So I'm a, I'm a ways away from that. And so I, I realize that because it is a um, steep learning curve, but Ultimately, that's where I see myself. I see myself putting together all of these building blocks that I've gained and building um, something sustainable for myself and for my family. Nice. Well, that's an encouraging uh, dream role to have or have in mind. Um, by the grace of God, all those things will work out. Amen. <laughs> Um, so the next question would be, we kind of, you kind of touched on, you know, doing things with people that look like you or for people who look like you. So in your area, how many black women are actually <laughs> in your field? Well, so this is what is so awesome about this black and genetics week. Um, I think it's amazing. I before this week and seeing, you know, all the folks um, who have been posting under the hashtag Black and Genetics, I hadn't seen a, a lot of Black women um, in the field. And I think it, it really didn't hit me until I started going to like genetics conferences and things like that. Because that's usually when it happens. That's when it hits you. Because we're from Indiana. And so our expectations aren't maybe as high as maybe if you attended a minority serving institution, you went to an HBCU, like you're surrounded by black excellence, you know, all the time. And so I think for us, like this sounds bad, but like our expectations aren't sky high. Like I'm going to come in here and see a room for the black people, but we, you might expect like, you know, a handful oh, or yeah. you know, I'm talking around, I'm going to see some. And I think it really hit me the first time I attended a human genetics um, conference. It was, um, it, it felt lonely. It felt lonely. And I think with genetics specifically, um, we're literally talking about issues that affect certain groups of people. That's, it's the nature of the field, right? So, um, you know, especially when you start talking about, you know, rare diseases and, you, you know, you start talking about certain populations that are affected and you're like, I'm, my people are not represented here, like, um, you know, by, by the researchers. And then, you know, of course, that's going to trickle down to, um, you know, the work that's being done and naturally, right? So if you are in a community that is Disease, it will motivate people like that to study it and then look for solutions to that problem and vice versa, right? So the disease doesn't affect you or people around you, then I mean, there's just less, I mean, there's just less pressure to study that thing or, or, or um, look into it. So it, it was a shock and it, it was lonely in a different way. And I think initiatives like the Black in you know, that we've been seeing, I think it was Black in Chemistry last week, Black in Physics is coming up. It's not only great for other people to see, look, there are Black people in these fields, but it's it's a way that we're seeing each other. Yeah. Because 
I started just clicking follow, 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 you know, just to know that you're, you're all out there. So I think if you are not at historically black college or university, or you're not at another minority serving institution, when you go out into the broader genetics world, you know, we're not as common. Well, that's unfortunate. Um, but I think that that's usually the case with like most STEM fields, which is why there's a lot of initiatives um, to expose like young African-American children to STEM careers to kind of build that pipeline. So I think it's amazing that you're following that hashtag and reaching out to new people um, and just staying connected. And that's what the STEM sisters are all about is connecting people um, and kind of showcasing what um, people with these careers might look like. So um, those are all the questions that I have for you today. Um, thank you very much for allowing me to interview you. Um, and that's all. Awesome. Thank you so much. I don't know when Black in Tech Week is. <laughs> it's every I'm week. Every week is Black in Tech Week. Listen. Okay. <laughs> Um, I hope I don't think I I'll find out though. It, so when uh, we won't wait till Black and Tech Week, though, we will, um, you know, flip the script soon and have, um, you know, part two or meet the STEM sisters with um, Ami Bakre. It's an honor to be interviewed, you know, by my sister, my sister, star. I feel like we should have little star tears on. Um, I'm here for it. Yeah, this is awesome. So um, stay tuned for more videos. If you are Black in genetics, please leave a comment because I want to know who you are. <laughs> if you're a Black in genetics, you know, or if you're Black in tech, or if you're Black in tech and genetics, because I know there's a lot of bioinformatics folks who are genetics. Bioinformatics, that's the future. If I could get back into it. That's what I would have done. Geniuses, and I definitely should have done that. Yep. Looking back. That's a regret that I have. Yeah. Bioinformatics people, you are your superstars. Leave us comments. If you black in bioinformatics. And honestly, if you're a child who's debating on uh, if you should do that, you should do, do that. that. Do that. If you're debating, like, should I be tech or should I be science? Bioinformatics. Find you a lady who can do both. Because <laughs> that's that's what those people are. Um, so yes, be wonderful to hear from you. Let us know your Instagram, your Twitter handles. We'd love to follow you back and keep in touch with you. And follow us on Instagram at STEM Sisters. And um, yeah, you'll be hearing from us soon. Thanks, guys. Bye. -bye. Bye.